The lighting is so much better. I like it. Daylight. <laughs> That's amazing what sunlight can do, right? Right. I'm like, oh, my hair. It's like it's been raining since yesterday up here. So it's like, I, I just whatever. It is what it is with my, my hair right now. Looks good. It looks like really curly. I like it. <laughs> it's very curly right now. It's just, just doing its own thing right now. <laughs> so I got everything fixed with the AC. Yes. Yeah, I woke up last night in the middle of the night. I'm like, man, it's hot in here. And then I walk out and the thermostat was off. I was like, no. We got it back on in the middle of the night, though. So that was. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, that, that, that actually ties right into our topic today of the self-regulating thermostat. So we, right. won't talk, we won't really explain it yet, but uh, well, that's what our topic is for today. So the concept of um, staying where you're comfortable. AC makes you comfortable. <laughs> very comfortable. I am very temperature sensitive. That is me. So. Yeah. Yes. Me too. I mean, it's a big thing for me even just trying to sleep. I can't sleep when it's hot. Me neither. I keep really my house cold. at 66 at all times. Oh, really? So, well, it's not, it's not that. I think it's like, I think we're at 68. I think we're okay. at 68. Yeah. Um, if it goes above, if it goes 69 or higher, like I can't sleep. Just, right. It's just not happening. Just not happening. So yeah. like, and then my husband's like a furnace. I don't know about Drew, but my husband's a furnace. Yep. So it's like, I just, I'm like, <laughs> and then on top of that, we have dogs like to get in the bed too. So there's that. And they, exactly. And ours are like bed hogs. They like to be right up next to you. So they have their own body heat. That's yep. why it's like so hard for us to like share rooms with people or like, because we Same. like it so cold and some people are complete opposite. And I'm like, Same. Oh. We, I'm also we very travel like with these everywhere are travel fans. Yeah. So uh, I don't have a fan that I travel with, but I put fan noise on YouTube in order to sleep. Like I have to have the background white noise. I'm really noise sensitive, light sensitive, temperature sensitive. Like if any of those things are off, I can't sleep like at yeah. all. Yeah. So like, you know, we were just gone, went on a, a little mini vacation and stuff and it wasn't, it wasn't bad actually, but like they have the blackout curtains in the hotels, right? But if even a sliver of it is open, <laughs> I'm like, I find it to be very distracting. <gasps> yeah, I can't sleep. I yes. can't sleep. And so then why like, why is it right there? <laughs> like one little sliver. I'm yes. like, oh my gosh. And then like one of the nights, so my husband has to take medication in order to sleep. So if he doesn't take the medication, he won't sleep eight hours, right? So um what did he do? We have these little CBD candies and stuff. So he had those. So those will help him get about four hours of sleep. But if he doesn't take his medication, he won't get eight. So he woke up at like 6 a.m. We were out to like almost one, right? So he wakes up at like 6 a.m. and he just brushed his teeth and doing all sorts of stuff in the room. I was like, can you lay down? <laughs> I was like, well, what it's is not going time on? to get up yet? No, I was like, I was like, we got to bed at like one. It is six. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> so, so he takes his pill then. So, like, so that knocks him out, right? Oh boy. So I, I'm like, I'm up and I'm getting ready. Like, it doesn't bother him at all. He sleeps right through it, right? So it's like, at this point, it's ten something in the morning, and I'm. I'm like, I'm just going to go to the gym and just leave him here. <laughs> it's like, so and he woke up right when I was about to leave. I was like, I'm going to the gym. I was like, I know. He's like, oh, I just took my pill too late. I was like, I know. Cause you woke me up at 6 a.m. <laughs> uh, yeah. You took it in the morning. <laughs> I know. So yeah. So he didn't even get down to the gym until I left. Like I left. What did I leave? I think I left at like. I don't know, close to noon, and I went back to the room, and he went back. He went to the gym at that point. So. You guys were literally like two ships passing in the night. <laughs> yep, pretty much, pretty much. So, so what did that day look like? Just like whatever during the day, went out at night. <laughs> yeah, well, and that that was pretty much what we had planned anyway. Like during the day, we planned to go to the pool on Saturday, but the, then there was the hurricane that came through, so we actually switched oh, our no. pool day to Friday. So we we went to the pool Friday instead, which was which was fine. Okay. And then Saturday we went and spent the day at the spa and then we went to shows and stuff at night. So, you know, we kind of planned it that way anyway. So our days would be really easy and like relaxing. And so they were, so it wasn't a big deal. Like I literally like every day, like I just got up, I had my breakfast, my coffee, went to the gym. Schmoozed uh, around. Just, yeah. Just chilled. Um, you know, went got, you know, when we watched the, the Alabama game in one day, won some money on that. So I was happy about that. Perfect. Like, <laughs> I was like, we just paid for our trip. Cool. No big deal. That's <laughs> you awesome. Know? So, yeah. Um, 
and so yeah so it was really chill and easy you know what i mean and like and, and i've told you before like i'm a, a night owl i go to bed after midnight anyway right. so that's normal for me and then i i get up late so uh so it wasn't like even like my circadian rhythm wasn't even off or anything like that because it was just it was just like how i normally am so how so was it really there fun. being on prep how'd you feel i was good like i was fine my so my husband likes to feed me <laughs> <laughs> so he's yeah, like, we like food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, I like you better when you're not on prep because then I can feed you all the foods and everything. And I was like, I'm still eating everything. I'm just not eating all the junk. Like we we ordered dessert at every restaurant we went to, and I ate none of them. <laughs> I know you said that, and then you only had like one dessert, taste, which is I didn't have, I didn't even have the dessert. It. I just had a taste of it. I was taste just like, of it. That was it. Like I had a spoon, and I'm good. I'm, I'm done. You know, like you're a better um, woman than me. <laughs> I'm, I'm tasting it. I need the whole thing. <laughs> See, I my taste buds have changed a lot. Like, have I? I used to be really, really into sweets a lot, and I'm just, I'm just not anymore. Like, I like them, but they have to be really rich in order for me to like them. Yeah. So, like, we went to Morton's the one night, and they had they brought um, out their little like their whatever so it has like the chocolate ganache in the center and all that. That's the one that I that I had because it was really rich. So that is really rich. Yeah. But yeah. then, but then if it's rich like that then you really only need a couple of bites because it's so it's so rich yep <laughs> so, exactly yeah, you know and again i'm not at that point in prep right now where i have to cut everything out you know what i mean like yeah. i i'm going to now like i said i kind of made a deal with myself that i'd be a lot more um strict when i got home and just made sure that um you know, like I was watching my sodium and all that kind of stuff. I didn't watch my sodium or any of that stuff. I just made sure that I, because even when you eat out, like that, that's the thing. It's like you may be eating clean, but there's still going to be added sodium. There's still going to be added things in there that you just don't know. So, um, so like I just cut my water up and things like that. I mean, when I left for the whole, after the whole weekend, I hadn't gained any weight at all. So um, I was like, all right, Perfect. I guess I did good. Plus my steps were really high from walking around all over the place too. So like normally with my cardio and stuff, I'll get in around 9,000 steps a day. And my steps were averaging about 13 to 14,000. So quite a bit more than what I'm used to. Yeah. 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 So, you know, in general, like I, I didn't, and I didn't change anything as far as food and stuff like that's concerned. But again, it just, I allowed myself to be able to, to actually order food out versus taking my food with me ever, everywhere I went. Like all, all but one of my meals every day was food that I brought. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So you, you, you stayed very tight. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, so I wonder why you had the success that you did. And probably <laughs> over the next couple of days, as you start getting back to your routine and sodium right. dropping off, you're even going to drop from that past week. Right. And that's what I'm hoping. Like, I think that, you know, again, I like this morning, I woke up the same weight that I was when I left for the, for the vacation. So perfect. Um, you know, I, I, I think tomorrow I'll probably have a little bit of a drop, maybe, maybe, hopefully. I feel like I look leaner. Like again, the whole vascularity thing, you can see all those things happening. Like I'm getting harder. I can see all those things. So, you know, sodium is not a bad thing. It's just the regulation of it. You know what right. I mean? Just making right. sure that you're taking in enough water to regulate it and all that kind of stuff too. So yeah. just like you said, it's like about that time to start dialing that in and yep. Now you'll start making sure that every meal and every day it's tracked and water and things like that. And just start getting those variables to a T. Yep. And that's, and that's the thing. It's like, you just, there's only so much that you can control at the end of the day. And there's always going to be variables, no matter what you do, no matter how close you are with things, there's always going to be variables. So you have to kind of allow your mind to be okay with that too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So how about you? How's your, how's your last week of prep been going? It has been a difficult week. <laughs> I was going to say, you sound really like, yeah. <sighs> I don't know when I spoke to you, when we recorded last week, had I had the ocular migraine yet? No, you, I saw it in your stories though. I saw it was like the next day. It was the next day that you got that. That makes sense. Yeah. So I went to go get my hair done on Wednesday and I was, I was, it was a fine morning. I woke up, everything's fine. And I'm, I'm in the middle of talking to my, she's my best friend who does my hair. And all of a sudden I couldn't see half of her face oh, and no. I haven't, I've only had it, what, these one other time and it was almost 10 years ago. And I was scared because I remember looking at the clock then and I could only see half of the clock and I was looking at her and I could just like, I was just trying to look at her and I couldn't see the other half of her face. And I was like, okay. Um, so I, I voiced it, which is not like me. Usually I'm a silent sufferer. And I was like, Kelly, I can't see your face right now. And I'm like starting to get floaters. And she's like, okay. Like, and she took care of me and I called my husband. He's like, I, I still had a couple more hours there. So he's like, do you want me to come pick you up? I'm like, let's just wait and see what happens. By the time I left, it turned into just like a full blown migraine. I could see at that point, but it was migraine. So I just went home, went to bed. 
And then all of a sudden, Friday night, I would, I woke up, I checked in with Jamie, everything's fine. Friday night, I developed a belly bloat. Like I was 12 months pregnant. Like, and I don't bloat. I never have GI issues. I can eat. I, I have not had a cycle in a long time. So like this, that was odd for me. So I'm like, what the frick is going on? Um, so I check in with Jamie. She actually gave me a refeed for that weekend. So oh. Saturday I wake up, I do a photo shoot. I am clearly bloated. Of course, it's a photo shoot at a beach in That's swimwear. That's right. You told me you were so excited about that. Yeah. So that happened. And then Saturday I'm getting ready to go to my refeed. And I'm, I've am i only had two meals that day. And my stomach, once again, just f- completely out. Drew's like, this isn't like digestional. Like this might be hormonal. Like you might yeah. be having a ghost period. Yeah. So my weight has just continued to climb and I just been dealing with this bloat. And, um, I find I was supposed to check in with Jamie this morning. I couldn't wait one more day. I called her last night while I messaged her last night. She called me right away and she was like, this is definitely a ghost period. Like Mm. it all makes sense. And with the ocular migraine starting and I'm like, it's just so weird that it just came out of left field, but that's the way sex hormones are sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, my body is now deciding to throw it. I checked in with her this morning after everything and we're going to push a little bit because I am going to the road to the Olympia next week. I see yeah. JM on Tuesday. So it stinks feeling like this. I literally have like no lines in my abdominals right now. Oh. So weird. And my core is always the first thing to come in and my glutes are always the last to come in. So like this is where I know just something is yeah. weird. And then yeah. I had my first meal today and then I just – I just um weighed in after that and I was down from this morning. So things are definitely shifting in the right yeah. direction. It's just well, I, I got my period the day that we left for vacation. So that was fantastic. Everyone is on their period. Like all my clients, Jamie was saying that she was having, <laughs> I'm like, what's happening? What I just had this feeling and I was wearing these, like these really light colored pants when we were driving. And I was like, I just better put a tampon just in case. I just yeah. had this feeling. And I, we got to Atlantic City. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Well, that was almost, I was like uh, four or five days late, which is kind of normal sometimes. I'm not, I'm not one of these people that I'm, I'm very off. It's usually 28 days, boom, on the dot, 28 days, like done. But if I'm off, I'm off by like four or five, six days. You know what I mean? Uh, some little. of my clients were late this month because last month was a five week month. Oh, so everyone yeah. feels like they're late, but yeah, it, yeah. So. Well, see, I have I have a period tracker app that I've used since literally since two thousand and eight. So oh God, the data and that thing. <laughs> yeah, seriously, like because back then it wasn't even apps. Back then it was a web page. <laughs> I wrote it down like, in a calendar. Well, that's that's when my husband and I started dating. That's when we started dating. Wow. So that's when I started tracking everything. Tracking everything, and I've never stopped. I literally have my cycles from. That's why I said like I know my body like a clock. Like, and I that's know. how I knew too, because I went back in my flow tracker, even though I have, I'm not getting a period right now, but the last time I thought I had a ghost period or symptoms, it was on the 24th of the month. Ah, Here we go. are on the 26th with two yeah. days ago is when everything really started to like, I was like, what is happening? It's such a mind F when you are pushing. I mean, I'm at 60 minutes of cardio day. My food just keeps dropping and yeah. everything's going the opposite way. And like, that's where I really just try to switch my hats and go, you're following the plan. That's right. It's work. It's got to be something else. Stay calm because the more that you stress about it, it's just going to get worse. Get Did you try taking like any mitol or anything like that or diuretics or anything like that just to try and help mitigate it? Did you have any, any like pain from it? Like any cramping? Last night I did. Last okay. night I had cramps. I literally texted Drew last night and I was, he was out with his friends. I'm like, I might bleed tomorrow. And I thought about waking up and taking some chasberry, which is just like an all natural, like good supplement for uh, regulating hormones and helping with hormone yeah. uh, symptoms. But I didn't because I literally just like didn't want to get out of bed. But if you would have asked me last night, I thought I was going to wake up bleeding this morning. And I was okay. I texted my best friend. I'm like, watch me get a freaking cycle six weeks out from the Olympia. And I haven't had one this year since, you know, I, st- I started prepping. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, the good thing about getting it now is then you won't, at least you won't have it during the Olympia. You know what I mean? Right. At least that's, there's that. (laughs) I just don't like like the head stuff, like the fatigue and like the migraines and the headaches. Like that's the worst. Like I need my brain to like function, but so hopefully 
by the time I see JM next week, I'll be a little bit more energized and tighter, yeah. feeling more like. Yeah, I get all those symptoms and stuff the week before. That's why I know that it's coming. Like I, I get it, like the like the three days or something before it's gonna hit. Like I can feel that it's gonna come, yeah. and then once it hits. Like that first day sucks, but then I'm, I'm good after that. Like, and I really, like, even now I don't really bloat all that much. You know, I don't have that issue anymore. Um, I used I to. Never a lot. I used to a lot, but I don't anymore. Um, now I, I mean, get it. Like when women are like, it hurts. Like yeah. it was painful. Yeah. Painful. Yeah. And I don't, I, I'm wondering, because another part of it too is like after last year's prep, I went and did, you know, my labs and stuff. And I really started taking more control over like my hormonal health and stuff. Like, yeah. Like, supplements and stuff like that. And ever since I've done that, like I really haven't had like rough periods. Um, there's another, there's another um, supplement. I can't remember what it's called. It's like called flow or something. I got it on Amazon. It's just like little gummies that I take every day. And ever since I started taking those too, it's just a bunch of natural stuff inside of it that helps you with any kind of symptoms and stuff. And you take it every day. Um, but I haven't had rough periods since then. You know since what I then. mean? That's yeah. interesting. So it's like, like again, I'll have a heavy flow the first day, maybe for the first two, two days or so. But it's not like, it's not painful. Anymore. Painful. Like yeah. it used to be really painful. It used to be really yeah. painful. So. Well, thank God that this isn't regular because, gosh, God bless you women that deal with these painful periods. Because yeah. like I was, I was like, what is happening? Like, it was scary. Yeah. <laughs> Well, just don't have the actual bleeding too, because then you're like, what is going on? Is there something Correct. wrong? Correct. You know, yes. and then, just, and then your brain starts going through everything. It's like, am I dying? Do I have a tumor? <laughs> it was just, it would just make you feel so much better if you were bleeding because you're like, a hundred percent. Oh, 100%, but, oh you know. absolutely. It's like, as soon as my period hits, I'm like, oh, there it is. There it is. Got it. Yeah. Understood. <laughs> I, so if I was bleeding just because I've been like, this is absolutely it, but. You know, yeah, the only thing that I really I, I have now as far as like other than like like I said, I had the fatigue and stuff like that going into it. For sure the fatigue hits. Like I can feel it with the with the strength and all that going into it. But it's also the bitchiness. I do get bitchy like the first like the two days prior to it hitting. Yeah. And I was told yesterday and the day before I was moody. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, my I patience gets am. thin. My patience just gets really thin, yeah. and like little things that wouldn't normally bother me bother me big yes. time. And I have to be like, okay, take a step back. Is, is this really a problem, or is it just right here? Right. <laughs> is, am I actually feeling this, or is this hormones? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, and like, and again, like I was coming up on my birthday too, so I was like, I knew it was supposed to be hitting, and I'm feeling all these things. I'm like, I'm supposed to be happy right now. What the hell? <laughs> Like, this is not cool. Like, I feel, I end up feeling like bad. Like, literally the worst time. I end up feeling bad. I'm like, I shouldn't be acting like this. You know what I mean? Like, I should, I should be better yeah. than this, you know? So I, I do, I take a step yeah. back and I, I pull it in. Also, you know, I'm a Virgo. So Virgos are very, like, we're not emotional people. We're not driven by emotions. So, like, yes. we have them, but we don't allow ourselves to react and respond to them. Yeah, so yep. it's like, I'm feeling all those things right here, but I'm not going to let it come bubbling out, you know? Right. So, right. Which could be yeah. a good thing too. I'm sure that helps you. Oh, it sometimes, does. Absolutely. But, it can be yeah. very, very stable. Plus, like, you know, we always talk about this too, because my husband's Spanish. So my husband has a very hot temper. So, and he's an Aries too, mm -hmm. which is like, again, yeah, <laughs> fire sign. So, you know, yes. you put those things together. <laughs> yeah. You put those things together and it's just like, oh, explosive kind of thing. Emotional yeah. too. Emotional. Yeah. Means. So, um, <laughs> you know, so we always talk about like his mom always told him that he needed to marry, like some German. So he's like, you need to marry like a Russian or a German girls something because they're very placid and they're very like regulated on everything that they do and they're just they never they're never up here they're never down here they're always right here yeah Even. and that's that's me i mean to a t like i'm never one of these people that's all over the place you're i'm not the drama queen i'm not that person i'm the one that's standing there yep. like this like okay are you done <laughs> yeah like let's find a solution a now. listener yeah. mm -hmm. yep. yep so you know the 15 years that you and i've been together the first like handful of them were rough because like i didn't i wouldn't respond to him whenever he would go off you know what i mean and he didn't know how, he didn't know how to respond to that because he wasn't used to that you know his ex was like that all that yeah. kind of stuff and i'm like i'm like i'm just gonna let you calm down and then we'll talk <laughs> Oh. And he's like, no, <laughs> yeah, not. exactly, Get exactly. Emotion. So, but you know, and, yeah. and once you learn over time and things like that, like we don't, he doesn't do that anymore. Like he doesn't because he, a, he knows he's not going to get a response out of me. Um, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> so, but but B, like it's just like 
it's almost like a, it almost becomes like a habit. You know what I mean? It's almost a habit when you when you start down that road with your emotional responses and things like that. And when you doesn't when he just doesn't need to do that anymore, and he knows that we're going to sit down and, and hash things out, like it's just totally different. So, you know, it's, yeah. you learn how to yeah. fight. Yeah, like we were talking about the love languages and stuff last time. It's like you just learn how to how to communicate with your partner better, you know. And so yeah. it's really like he doesn't he doesn't have those problems. Plus, he's getting older and he's like he doesn't care anymore. <laughs> it's like the older you get, the less shit that you get. <laughs> right. I was gonna say like, what are you two arguing right. about these right. days? Exactly. I'm like, this is just... <laughs> who's responsible to plan date right. night? Like, exactly. Okay. Yeah. It's it's just, it's just <laughs> stupid. Like, there's no reason for it, and so. Yeah, I do it. Most of what you guys argue about is probably what Drew and I argue about yeah. in business. It's like our yep. ideas and like he wants to do this. And I'm like, well, what about this? And it's like, yep. Oh, we, we got into a little <laughs> thing um, in Atlantic City because uh, my Instagram, my business Instagram, uh, it almost got hacked. It didn't. I caught it, but it almost got hacked. So we're sitting there like trying to fix that's like my worst thing yeah, we're trying to fix the settings all this kind of stuff and he's like well you have to have two-factor or authorization on that i was like i do have it on there i was like but you give it out to people to to work on our marketing he's like i don't give it out to people out there have that been privileges like that's what we're getting at the market you're like well i didn't give it to anyone and dan last I time i checked that i know i was like i was like, like yeah. this is behind the scenes he's like, you don't have it on though because you didn't get a text i was like they tried to log in they didn't make it in that's why i didn't get a text i was like i get an email because they changed the email but they didn't actually log into the account. So I was able to stop them before they logged into the account, which is why I didn't get a text message. That was the kind of argument. Thank happened. God you were paying attention I to that. Know. That could have been really bad, especially with how close Cuties is in your event. I know. Oh my goodness. I know. Well, I know. yeah, that's why I pay for that stupid check mark. I know that sounds really ridiculous, but it's supposed to be like better. It's supposed for, to be, like, but what I've heard is. is that in real life application, it's not. So I don't know, because I don't, okay. I didn't do it. And the reason why I didn't do it is because my legal name's actually not on my Instagram. And in order for you to get the check okay. mark, you have to have your legal name on there. And I, I keep yeah. that barrier of separation there. Um, but anyways, right. but, um, you know, I've had issues recently with, um, uh, getting restrictions on my, you know, my business account, my personal accounts, things like that. And what it used to be in the past is that you would appeal a decision or something like that. And it would take forever for you to get that back. Well, I've been doing that the last two months since it started, because now it's like, once you're on their radar, like everything gets freaking flagged. Right. So every other day I'm getting flagged. So they reverse it within a matter of a couple of hours now. So I think it's just a matter of like, I think I, I, I just don't, I don't know because I don't have the check, but I think that what happens now is that they just have to give better customer service. They have to because that's what's supposed to happen. Like if I have an issue, I'm supposed to be able to just like contact yeah. them right away. And then I have like all these codes yeah. and stuff that I'm supposed to put in if someone is hacking. Well, or... thankfully, like again, I got an email saying that somebody somebody changed the, the email address on the business account. So... Yeah. Thank God, because you were on vacation. I know. Like, what if you were like? And it was like nine thirty at night, but I was. We just come out of a um of a show, so I was sitting there there at the bar, and I get the notification. I was like, I didn't change the email, thank so I God. logged right in and changed everything. And I was like, all right, thank God, like you yeah. saved it for mm -hmm. sure. And that's a you There's know that's sleep. the thing is like if it was in the middle of the night, I turn my phone on sleep mode so I don't get notifications and stuff like that. Me too. So it's like if it was in the middle of the night, I would have been screwed. You know, like yeah think well the other part of it too is i would say i was like i think and i don't know what the whole game plan is with the with the hacking but my thought process is that they they go in this is my thought i thought okay they, they want to get into accounts where maybe they can pull money from an account you know what i mean like like if we had that account monetized or something so then they could get into the bank account they could pull the money from that right but i'm not yep. monetized so th there's nothing there of value for them at all other than they can just go right. out and spam other people from it. That's the only other thing that they could do from it. So I can understand that. The, like the Bitcoin yeah. people where they like go in and they start posting about, oh, you know, as yep. you, oh, I made so much money yep. off of this right. investment, blah, 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 blah. How can people not like tell that that's fake anymore? You it's so weird to me. Like it, it clearly looks right. fake. It does. Like, but I mean, we, we get that all the time in our messenger and stuff. They're, they're, you know, they, we get spam messages all the time. We never click on any of them because we're not stupid. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just crazy how often we get that stuff. I even had, this was a couple years ago. Somebody went and actually opened a bank account in my name. Like went and actually opened a bank account, like online or whatever. I got the notification in my email. So they had your identity. Yeah, I don't know how they did it exactly, but I had to go actually into the branch in order to get it closed. 
there was no money in it, My dad nothing. But I that. think what they do is again, that's a way for them to kind of test and see what they're able to do. And then from there, then they yeah. build, you know, they, they apply for credit cards and they do this and they do that. And then you're screwed, you know? So, yeah. you know, we have life lock and life alert on everything. So again, whenever things, whenever something My dad happens, has that. Yeah. And that's what saved him, but they, they got his entire identity and it was bad. And my dad, literally, my dad literally does not put a credit card over the internet. He calls the internet, the interweb <laughs> and he refuses it to use a credit card. And that's the jerk mm-hmm. that got, got mm-hmm. them. He got the notification from LifeLock. He's like, this is a right. joke. Like who's going to steal my right. identity? Like where's the day? I'm like, I guess that's why you have that's LifeLock. Right. No, you have to do it. And it's, you know, it's a pain in the butt sometimes because even when you have legitimate people like trying to check your credit, if you're going for right. a loan or a credit <laughs> yes. card or something like that, you have to unlock it so they can do it and all of that kind of stuff. Do but it. at the end of the day, it's worth it. At the end of the day, it's worth having all that protection because all it takes is one and boom, it's over. Yeah. And it's fairly cheap yeah. too. It's like a couple hundred bucks yeah. for the year mm-hmm. or something. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. nothing. And again, that's what saved, saved us there. I mean, they tried to do it to my husband at one point too, and it caught, they caught them doing it that. And like, you know, wow. so it's like, it happens all the time and people just don't even realize. Yeah. So those of you out there listening, make sure you get your, your shit on lock because get life lock, get those, <laughs> yeah, <Life-lock>. right. <laughs> get those uh, two factor identifications, get all that stuff in there because all it takes is one and boom. You know, yeah. and, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, we travel a lot. And if you hook up your phone to these these random Wi-Fi services and stuff like that, people have access to all of that. They have access to all of it. And that was the, part, yeah. the other thing that we got into an argument about. He's like, you're on this Wi-Fi. I'm like, no, I'm not. I have Wi-Fi turned off. <laughs> it's like, it's not the Wi-Fi because it's not on. You taught me well. <laughs> I know, right? So I'm like, you know, it's... it's I told it, you yep. so. I mean, just little things like that. I mean, like, it's... And, I, and he's like, well, they, they, he's like, I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, we're good. No, we no, stopped no, it. No, no, it's no. over. <laughs> I was like, we just have to pay attention now. We're yeah. good. We dodged That's the right. Bullet. So that was, that was, that was a fun, that was a fun evening. <laughs> Vacation. Yeah. Oh, so wait, if that's the only fight though, you guys Right. Agree. Exactly. Exactly. You know, those, but again, going back to those, that's well, that was that whole tangent. So we get into little, little spats like that, but you know, that ends up being like, okay, we're good. <laughs> We're good. We but, figured that one out. Next. Yep. So, but it's mostly about yeah. work and things like that. That's what that's what we yeah. fight about. And again, as well. we don't have kids, <laughs> and you guys don't have kids, so it's like right. you know we're we're good. Yeah. Other than that, we're pretty much on the yeah. same page. It's I also, <laughs> but that's two strong personalities. You know, that's right. what happens. Well, that's why you have to have a yin yang too. Like I always say all the time. You know, yeah. like I, again going back to I'm a Virgo, he's an Aries, so we are definitely a yin and yang, 100 percent yin and yang. Yeah. So like we're very 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 different, but. Um, and that's yeah, good, good, especially with a mm-hmm. business concept. You know, sometimes he says the idea and I'm like, oh, that yep. is better than my thought, yep. you know? And sometimes I'm like, no, I think yep. mine's better. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. Like we always say, there's that saying that if two, two people think the same way, then one of you is not necessary. So, you know, it's just, just, it is what it is. You need to have, you need to have varying ideas in order to get challenged even, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, I mean, yep. it works and it <clears throat> it helps you to, to grow. Like we were talking about the campers and climbers. We're both climbers, you know what I mean? So it helps yep. us to climb that way and all of that kind of stuff too. So yes. it, does, it does it does make a difference. Um, and I, I you know, I, not to say that if you have everything in common that you're not going to be successful at whatever you do, but like if you're trying to run a business together too, you do have to have some varying ideas. <laughs> yeah, we're getting ready to, to potentially move our gym to another okay. spot and we were... Uh, dealing with like layout and things yesterday, just him yeah. and I. And I said, no, like I want to do this with our staff because I think four heads on a layout are better than yeah. two because we get so many different perspectives of how everybody uses the gym and, yeah. you know, you know, ideas and things like that. And he was like, okay, cool. So we're going to do a meeting like the four yeah. of us to kind of talk about design. But, you know, it, again, like to me, multiple people in that type of situation is better than just two because we get so many more different inputs and ideas. Well, also understanding your like staff that. and your customers too is different than what than exactly. understanding what you want. You know, I think a lot of people get into that. Like, oh, I think this is awesome. So everybody's gonna think it's awesome. Well, no, that's not how that works. You have to test things. You yeah. know. Yeah. Or functionality yeah. wise, it doesn't yep. make sense. So like, why would the cable crossover be way over here just because it looks better over there, but not functional, yep. you know, and that's, those are all things we were talking about in this meeting yesterday. And I'm like, I just want my staff to be involved because I want to make sure that it yeah. works for everybody. Well, the same thing, you know, we do that every year with the Cuties Conference Stage too. We do exit surveys. So we find out like what people liked, what they didn't like, you know, sometimes something I thought was really cool, they don't care about, you know, or 
you know, like sure. what the pandemic year, <clears throat> we changed everything at that point. But Bef- before that, we had a much larger audience, smaller um, ticket prices, and it wasn't quite as luxury, okay. you know. Um, okay. And then with the pandemic, we were forced to change it because of capacity restrictions. So we're like, okay, well, if we're going to do this with less people, there's only one way to do this. We have to up the prices because otherwise we can't, we can't pay for everything. You know what I mean? Like the more people you have, the more income you have, the, you know, the more options you have. So, so we brought everything down as far as numbers. Um, and we upped everything up as, as far as luxury items and things like that are concerned. And when that year was over with, we went out to everybody and said, what did you like better? Did you like it smaller, more intimate, where you got more attention, more one-on-one time, you know, more, you know, in-depth training, or did you like the big one where everybody was there and they had, it was like, you know, all this stuff and everybody likes the more intimate, everybody. I think that's what makes yeah. you different. And it <clears throat> truly is. Like for anybody listening that is considering going to this event, it is luxurious. Yeah. yeah. It is luxury. I was not expecting <laughs> that. I mean, it is it is in a Ritz Carlton. Yep. It is next to this beautiful mall right next to a Louis yep. Vuitton. Like literally don't even the food outside. was divine. Yeah. Like it was so yeah. luxurious and that's what makes it feel so absolutely. special and you're absolutely right i think less numbers i would rather have less numbers and pay mm-hmm. more and be staying at a ritz carlton have my food provided have less people be more intimate and that's like your clientele right. as well you know exactly. somebody that wants to pay that to invest yep. in themselves and having the one-on-one time oh, with you guys crazy. you know that was the thing too like even yeah. for myself hosting the event i started getting like for a couple of years i was very overwhelmed where i didn't even get a chance to talk to some of the people that were there like i didn't get to say hello mm. to them because you know I'm, I'm running around doing stuff and everything i don't get a chance to even i didn't get a chance to even introduce myself to half the people some of the time and i was like i was wow. like this kind of sucks you know, like I, I, it was great. Like it was, it was amazing. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, like I I'm doing this because I want to be able to connect to the people that are coming. You know what I mean? Right. And from what I saw last year, you do such a great job connecting with everyone. You come down to breakfast, yes. you sit with everyone. You're with different yes. people every morning during the day. You're at lunch with someone else. Yep. Like at the events, you're able to enjoy and be right. present. So you've done a really great job, I'm sure, with that progression over the last. Yeah, and it's just been, it's just been interesting because that was that was that was the thing when we came out of that year that I was actually really surprised about. I was like, all right, well, I guess we'll stick with this this format then because this is what everybody liked. And we did, and every year we ask we do the, ask the same questions. You know, we ask them what they liked and what they didn't. So that way, when we come back the following year, we can we can adjust and adapt. You know, you know, uh, if, just because I think it's great doesn't mean it actually is. You know. Yeah. So. yeah. And, and that's sometimes hard on our own ego. We're like, oh man, we were really excited about that. But to everybody else, they that's don't, right. they don't that's care. That's right. You know, <laughs> But it's good to get yeah, and the same thing comes down to when you're when you're putting together products and stuff like that, as you know, with your gym and stuff. Like when I'm I'm testing stuff with my suits and retail and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, sometimes I think this is an amazing innovation, and people are like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. okay, never mind. And it's one that you maybe have to splurge yeah. on, and you're like, is it yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but that's where those survey monkeys yep. and feedback mm-hmm. is imperative. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So we are in. How many weeks out now? Going up to, I'm going up to seven. You're going up to five. Okay. Five. There's only, is there only two more weeks of Olympia qualifying events? Is that it? Is that two more left? I, and then everybody else. I think you're right. Yeah. The O cutoff is October 9th. Yeah. So it's going to be, I don't know. So Daytona's mm-hmm. this weekend. Mm-hmm. I know that. And then San Antonio. San Antonio's no, um, last weekend, this past weekend. Rising Phoenix. A oh, rising Phoenix, Phoenix this weekend. Yep. And then there's and then Legions. next weekend's Legions. And is Legions the last one? Is that the last weekend? And it's on a Sunday and then the cutoff on okay. Sunday. So I think Legions yeah. kills it. Okay. Sunday. So then everything everything else. Travel. <laughs> I know. I gotta start doing that. So that's the thing. I'm like, I, again, I'm getting down to that. The, this is the, the the crunch time, right? Like you probably felt the same thing. I think once you get for me, it's like once you get underneath that eight week out mark. That's when you start like, okay, everything needs to be dialed in perfectly. You know, Correct. so I'm like, yeah, I got to get off the the, ca- the countdown calendar. I've got a little app on my phone and I'm like, all this stuff, you know, so those are, those are the things it's like, okay, we're getting there. It's almost there. Yeah. Once eight weeks out hits, it just, it's like, yep. 
seven weeks it just it just starts like ticking and then when six weeks hits that's when like everything's yep. changing all the time and your body's responding and you're waking up and you're seeing something different all the time so it's when the fun begins but it's also when you're kind of really in that crunch yep. phase uh, I, tell, I would tell people it's the five week out freak out so <laughs> it happens every year and yes. this is the majority of the girls that i work with including myself that freak out at that five week mark because it's like yeah. when you're five weeks out, that's enough time to have a lot of changes happen, but it's not enough time to have a lot of changes happen. So you're Correct. starting thinking, okay, we're almost at a month. Like we've got one more week and it's a month, you know? So if I always yeah. tell people like, if you can make it past that five week out freak out mark, you'll be okay. Just here. And then just yeah. cruise. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, Five week out freak out. Yeah, it's a, a, every, every year. Like uh, that's, that's the time frame where girls will start messaging me nonstop. I'm like, I'm like, listen, how many weeks out are you? Five? Yeah, okay. Just just breathe for a week. You'll be all right. You're okay. <laughs> Give it a week. You'll be okay. <laughs> I I have some of those too. <laughs> I mean especially for even with the suits and and stuff. Yeah, even with the suits and stuff. I'm like, guys, I'm like, like when somebody buys a suit from me, they automatically get a, a video that tells them the whole process of how the suit process works right. and everything this is this is when you're gonna take your measurements this is when the the sewing starts this is when the bling starts this is when it'll be ready to go this is what's going to happen in between and now that ne never fails so is my is my suit what is my suit doing now what, blah, 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 blah. go back to go back watch to the recording video. video i promise watch the video <laughs> i'm like and if you don't want to watch the video go to my instagram it's highlighted in the story highlights twice <laughs> You'll be yeah. okay. If you want to yeah. read it versus yeah. it's it. all right there. I'm like, if, if, if you ever question where your suit is in the process, that's where it is. We're good. We got this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so fun though, because you do like the most fun part of I our do. sport. Yeah. You know, oh, everybody wants their suit, especially your yep. first suit. I remember ordering my first, it gives me goosebumps. I was so excited. And then when it finally came and I put it on for the first time, I like yeah. felt like an athlete. Mm -hmm. So like you have the most exciting part of our entire process. So everybody's like, I want my nine stuff. times out of 10. If I'm there when they open their suit, cause that happens a lot, you know, or I, I give it to them in person or something nine times yeah. out of 10, they start crying because it's like, that's the moment where it becomes real. You know, that's yeah. the moment. That's it right there where it's like, Oh my God, this is actually happening. You know, I'm yes. aware of this. This yep. is mine. Not only, and when you feel yeah. it and you feel how heavy yep. it is and luxurious and not just does, the first suit, but also like the pro debut suit, like those, those, all yes. those things, all the feels, the feels are all there, you know? And I'm like, oh, yeah, so cute. What a cool you know, right? <laughs> I'm yeah. like, this is how I make my money for real. This is my living. <laughs> it's so awesome. It's so cool. Because you do, you just, you do yeah. the glam part. You do all the fun yeah. part. Well, I gotta imagine it's probably the same way for like people that make like wedding dresses and stuff like that. I'm sure it's probably the same kind of situation for them. Yeah. And the creative yeah. outlet, especially with a wedding dress, if you're designing something from like yeah. ground zero, like I could only imagine yep. like the creative mm -hmm. freedom and oh God, the different fabrics mm -hmm. like that. Would be so and every once in a job. while I get to do fitness costumes and stuff, not very often, but when I do, and I don't take them on very often because they are a lot more intense because you have to, you know, you have oh, to start from the ground up. But whatever I do, those are a lot of fun because again, there's no rules there. You just, you, you just no. get to start from whatever's in your head and, and it comes right. out. And the yeah. theme. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot yeah. of fun. The, like arm things. Yeah. Are in, yeah. yeah. I did a pageant so cool. a few years ago and like I made my, my wings, everything for the, for the runway and everything. That was just so much fun. Like I just really enjoy doing that. I have a very, like when I took on my cool. aptitude test, they told me I should be an engineer when I was a kid. So like, I, I love putting pieces together and, and creating full, full puzzles. Like that's just my thing. I like doing that. So. Well, I think you're in, you're in the right spot. <laughs> Don't, don't make a career. I know, adjustment. right? I think we're I think good. good. I, think, I think we got this. I think we got this. <laughs> so speaking of adjustments, let's talk about the uh, self-regulating thermostat idea here. <laughs> yeah, so you watch Barbie. This is where... This is where well, no, no. The, actually, from. the idea came from this weekend. When Again, when me and my husband were sitting there talking and we were talking about um, why okay. people succeed and why they start to not succeed anymore and things like that. So we started talking about that. But when we watched the Barbie movie last night, I actually, was to say, yeah, I got my, it's my Barbie shirt i got it on and everything on, Let's go party. <laughs> but when i watched it last night um there's that whole speech from um, uh, america ferrera her, her character talks about how you know as women we're told we have to basically fit into this box right um and i'll put a little clip up of it when i go and edit this podcast together i can't put the whole thing up so we'll get dinged for like copyrights and stuff but go check out the movie check out this particular particular uh speech if you haven't seen it yet because it's very um i think most people can relate to it right 
And, you know, talks about how women are told to be, you know, basically we're supposed to be supportive, but not over the top. We're not supposed to be, not supposed to stand out because we're supposed to support the other women around us. We're not supposed to do this, but we're supposed to be here. We're supposed to be not way up here, but we're not supposed to be way down here either. We're supposed to be right smack dab in the middle. Successful, yeah. but not too successful. Correct. We're yeah. supposed to, we're just supposed to be here, right? This is the box that we're supposed to be in, right? So the concept of the self-regulating thermostat is just like what you had going on with your AC today. It keeps you in a spot where you're comfortable in your home you know? So yes, as you start going down the road of doing well at something, like for example, say um, you're in this sport and you know, you're, you're, you, you do well at local, you go to national, you get your pro card, you get up to the pro stage, you start doing really well, you go up to the, you make it to the Olympia. And then you start getting scared of the potential that you have at the Olympia, right? So you start putting things into place to self-regulate so that you don't hurt yourself by succeeding. If that makes sense. Correct. Right. So it's an event um, or it's a mindset or something that that goes on in your your brain. You know, uh, I'll use myself as an example too. It's like, well, I made it to the pro league, but I'm too tall to make it to the Olympia. That's my out. That's my excuse. That's my thing. I'm too tall to win a show and make it feel yeah that's the thing that keeps me safe when i fail right yeah. i see this yeah. happen to a lot of people and i get frustrated because i see people that have so much potential and they get up to that that point where they're right here they're so close and then they self sabotage they're their own yes. limiting factor they're, they self sabotage yeah. it's and it's their way of protecting it's themselves right. it's exactly right but it's their way of sabotaging their success as well so then what happens is is they get to that point and they're like oh oh i'm so close but i don't i I can't do this i can't do this i can't do this so they self-sabotage and they drop but now they're not happy either because they're not succeeding at all right so they're like okay now we're below so now instead of being in that 66 degree zone that you like now we're in the 58 degree zone right so now we gotta we gotta turn up the heat again so we can get back up to that 66 degrees we get to the 66 yeah. degrees. Okay, we're comfortable here again. Okay, I'm getting a little bit more successful, getting up to 70 degrees. Oh, this is too hot. I got I to gotta knock it back down again. So that... And that's where you start believing that story you create in your own mind because you're creating that sabotage, but it's happening as you think it's yes. going to happen. But you're, you're doing, doing it to, it to yourself. yourself. That's the yes. biggest thing. It's that you're, you are limiting yourself based on your own yeah. thoughts, your own ideas, your, whatever it is that you have going on in your head. So let me actually pull this up. Um, where is it? While you do that. So like, I have a really good story about this from last year. Um, after I turned pro, one of the, one of the earlier shows I did early on was uh, a Texas show. I believe it was Dallas or something like that. And my, one of my very first posing coaches was Daraja oh. Hill she was competing at that show. And I absolutely love uh-huh. Dayraj. I love her as a human. I love her as a posing coach at all the things. And then obviously when I turned pro, you know, I kind of did my own thing and, you know, I knew I was going to be competing with her and things like that. So it was the first time we were on stage together and it was me, her and Jody in that uh, top call out. And I got so gun shy. I was like, I, I literally said to myself, like, I just need to step back because I got to let Dayraj do yeah. this. And my feedback from Tyler, Paul Rivera, who's Uh her coach, my husband, Drew, who's in the audience was like, you gave her that show. Like you literally just sunk yourself. Like you looked timid, timid. You weren't hitting your poses. And I was like, I literally said that to myself in my brain. Like, I'm just going to step back and let Durajo win it. Like, of course she's going to win this. But if I showed up my best that day, and if I thought, you know, it's the simple thought that you hear on Instagram and social media all the time, why not me? But really, it's very simple. Why not me that day? Why couldn't I think that I had the potential to win that day? I was in the top call out with her. I literally gave gave it away, maybe. Um, but I did that to me. And that's, and that's what it is. It's a, it's an event, a person or, or yourself that, that puts you into that, that position. So another good example is a lot of people use the excuse of politics, right? They use the excuse of politics. I'm never going to make it up there because I don't do this, that, the other thing. I don't know this person. Um, I don't know the judges. My, my coach isn't one of the top coaches, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't pay the sponsorships, Mm -hmm. 
all that stuff doesn't matter at all. No. At all. No. To spell that right now, it doesn't matter at all. Like, I can tell you, because I've sat on the judging panel, I've been a judge before. Again, I'm not anymore, but I was. There have been, there were times where I was sitting on that judging panel and a girl would come out that I had worked with. And I didn't realize I'd worked with her because like I'm posing or whatever. I didn't realize I'd worked with, I don't, I don't look at their face. I look at their body. <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't realize yeah. until later. I'm like, oh, that was so-and-so, right? I had already judged her and I already marked her down, you know, whatever it was that I had for her. Judges yeah. don't look at you like that. They just don't. They just don't. Right. You know, right. There becomes a time where, yes, when you're in the pro league and things like that, they pay attention to you. They pay attention to what you're doing. And then if you're improving and things like that, that's human nature and all of that kind of thing. But they're paying attention to you and your physique and how you are taking your feedback and applying it. They're not paying attention to, oh, I wonder who her coach is. Did she make a post about and this or that the other thing on Instagram the other day? No. They don't care. Right. No. And that's why the judging system uh -huh. is the way it is. They throw out the, the highest and lowest. And even more than that. There's, you know, what is it? I think at the Olympia, it's only five scoring judges. So there's what? There's 11 or 12 people on the panel. On so the panel. all the rest of those scores get thrown out. Thrown out. There's only five scores yeah. that actually count. Yes. So so let's say somebody was doing something shady, which I'm telling you, it's it's not happening that yeah. I can see. Like, I think that, they, that the judging is very fair. Um, you know, it, it takes care of yeah. itself with those those rules and those implementations that the NPC and yeah. IFBB have. No, there's definitely performed. people out there that that try to gain the competitive advantage. There definitely are people that do that. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah. it doesn't work. <laughs> right, because you have to get so many factors yeah. and people to be on board with that. It, I think it would be next yep. to impossible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, no, it's, it just doesn't work, you know. Um, and then another excuse is the PED excuse. You hear it all the time. You know what I mean? Well, that's, this person's taking that, so I can never, I can never beat them. Okay. All right. Well, listen, I'm a, I'm a big believer that whatever you take, just makes whatever you're doing go faster. <laughs> Meaning like, it's just going to get you to your potential faster, especially as a female, it's just going to get you to your potential faster. So if you just take more time, you're going to get there. You're still going to get there, right. but you, you just have to take more time. Right. So yeah, that goes for yes. genetics too. Somebody might have great genetics. That doesn't mean you can't get there. They're just going to get That's there right. faster. You have to work 10 times as hard. Now you have to ask yourself, are you willing yep. to do that? Yep. Maybe, but um, it doesn't mean that you cannot, yep. it just means that it's your timelines off yep. from others. And you hear it all the time. It's like, well, is this person on this? Is this, who cares? Who cares? Thing. I'm so sick it's of like, that. Who cares? Run your own race. It doesn't matter. No. Yeah. They have to look at the, it matters that's what right. you want to do, what you feel comfortable with and how you are right. going to get there. It doesn't matter what anyone else is doing. Look at yourself and inward and ask, ask yourself, what am I willing yep. to do? What timeline am I willing to do or sacrifice? And that's yep. all that matters. And I always tell people to do that when you're not in prep already, <laughs> meaning like, that's a great like point. set your boundaries, non -emotional. Yes, set your boundaries before you ever decide to do this and write it down somewhere. So that when you get yes. into the thick of things and you start thinking, oh, well, just a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. No, stop. You made you Correct. made your your you made your limit right here. Don't keep pushing yep. past it and stick yeah, to don't it. Don't keep pushing past it. Stick to your limit and understand that. Okay, if, if things aren't happening at my limit, then I need to go back and figure out what's going wrong and why I why I have to fix this. You know, reevaluate. Because I'll tell you one thing too. Taking more PEDs and things like that are not going to make you better most of the time. <laughs> Mis no, Again, especially not. as a female, it can make you a hell of a lot worse sometimes. It can. Absolutely. So, yes. Females should be tapping out on nat natural genetic mm -hmm. potential as much as they can, because so many of us come to this sport and we haven't even dieted a second. Yep. <laughs> like just mm -hmm. diet for six months to a year without any kind of fubbing or any kind of binging or any kind of just stick to a diet. Prove to yourself that you can um, be responsible to be on PED. Yep. It's right. And it should only, PED should only complement an already very great training program, a very great nutrition program. It is not yes. magic. They are not yeah. magic. They're not going to make They're you not. win. I know plenty of women that are running plenty of PEDs and they would take anything in the kitchen sink and they still yep. can't win a show because they can't follow yep. a diet. Or they can't, or oh, they don't train <laughs> like, hard. You know, that's the other part too. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's the diet part, but there's also the training. I see so many women that are like, well, I've been in the gym for six months. 
doing cardio. So can now I'm gonna go. Boots. Now I'm gonna go do a show. Okay, that that's fine. Yeah. You can do that, but don't then just go jump on some stuff because you never actually trained. You never actually lifted. Right. Your body hasn't even hit its natural potential yet. Do that first. Yeah. And, and then figure out if you want to take it from there. That's the first thing. You know, and the other thing, too, yeah. is to stand back and say, well, the reason why I can't beat her is because she's on this and she's on that. OK, so let's just say, you know, you know, for a fact she's on this and she's on that or whatever. Is that going to change what you do for yourself? Right. Are you going to go any less hard in the gym yeah. or are you going to fumble your diet just because you, just know, because you know she's doing that? Doing... Is that going to change what you're right. doing for yourself? Because if so, that's a really, really poor mindset. That's a poor mindset. Then, right. You shouldn't be stepping Correct. on stage in the That's first right. place. You should be doing this because, because you want to do it for, for yourself, yourself, not doing it because Absolutely. she's doing it. Correct. Yeah. And I tell, I tell my girls that all the time, you know, when they start getting into the comparison game, I'm like, whoa, 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 let's, let's take mm -hmm. a step back. Let's go back to our mm -hmm. why. Why are we doing this? Are we doing this to beat this girl or to, I hope not because then, then we're never going to have longevity in this sport. That's going to burn out very quickly. Now you should be thinking about your kids that are mm -hmm. watching you and you're showing them a healthy lifestyle. The last time you were on stage, beating that package, maybe we're not even talking about the stage. Maybe we're talking about health yeah. factors, getting your cholesterol into a good spot, less um, bloating and GI issues. I literally just took on a client. She's been working with a coach for years, had plenty of GI issues. She was like, there's no way we're going to solve all this. We've done a low FODMAT diet, a little bit of supplementation here and there. And her digestion, she literally just texted me this morning. She went for her second free meal this week, which was a burger and fries. And she had no awesome. issues zero mm -hmm. issues, but it just needs a little bit more focus right. and appreciation and understanding where you're at. Like to her, she, she's, she That's hit right. her goal. She's yep. healthy. Yep. Now going back That's to this too, to back we can to. jump back, back into this. Okay. Let's say, let's say you're that girl that you, you just saw that girl are doing all this stuff. So you decided to do it. Let's say, let's say you become successful then. So you become successful now that you're taking all the same stuff that that last girl just took. Guess what now? Guess what you got to deal with now? Imposter, imposter right. syndrome. Because now you're like, well, did I do this or did the PEDs do this? Right. So yeah, that's another big thing that happens in our sport a lot. Not not just about the, the PEDs and stuff like that either, but it's just in general, people have a hard time with imposter syndrome because this is a subjective yeah. sport. And, you know, I get it all the time. I got this in my, my anonymous question box of the day. Uh, somebody asked me if, if things were... Uh, like reverted back and they had to start and, and do a do-over. Like, do you think you would win your pro card again? That was what somebody asked me. I said, yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Wow. You know, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, the biggest yeah. thing that, that I think people have a hard time with sometimes is um, comparing physiques with other physiques. Like we just talked about, like, yeah, I'm, I, I, my physique is very different from what was being rewarded 10 years ago. Absolutely. But I've also, I've also yep. changed my training. You know, there's been a lot of things that we didn't even know about 10 years ago that we know now, things like that. Um, you know, I went pro in a completely different, different organization or not organization, uh, division of pro and figure, um, you know, all those kinds of things. We revert back to that hundred percent. I'd win my pro card again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And even yeah. today, yes, I would win my pro card again, because you know what? I'd be training for this division. Versus training for that right. division, I'd be using for this category, I'd be using and implementing what we know now versus what we knew then. You know, so going back to, I always say like, you can't compare Arnold Schwarzenegger with Rami. Like, you can't compare the two of them. They both won Olympia titles. You know what I mean? In the yeah. same category, but you put them on the same stage now, they look nothing like they belong together on stage. They don't. You know, because they're yeah. different yeah. times, different methods of training, different methods of diet, different methods of PEDs, different, different everything. So, you know, you, you step back and you're like, okay, you can sit here and question, do I deserve to be here? If you won, you deserve to be there, period. And you will, you would do yes. it again, yes. again and again, because those same work ethic and the same mindset and everything it took to get it the first time, if you had to do it again, yeah, yeah. you would. That's right. Absolutely. I would do it again in a heartbeat Absolutely. if I had to. Yep. Because I love this sport and that's my why. Because it, mean, right? it makes me better every day. I'm not going there to try to beat X or to, you know, even step on the Olympia stage. Of course, that's always yeah. my goal. Who doesn't want to win a show? We we've talked about this in all of our yep. podcasts. But at the end of the day, if I can sit back after a show and say, did I do everything possible? Am I happy with what I yep. brought? Did I beat my best? 
I'm going to be okay with that. I'm going to be very happy yep. with that. And, that. and that that goes back to what you just said. You did what you could do versus doing something because of somebody else or whatever, like we were just talking about with, with then that's when you have to question when you start, when you start compromising your own beliefs, when you start compromising your own limits, when you start compromising what you said you wouldn't compromise or trying to do things for the political reasons, when you start compromising those things, that's when you have to question, okay, do I really deserve this yeah. or not? You know, that's when, yeah. that's when that, that'll start going into your brain because you just compromise what you, what you said you wouldn't, you know, you right. have to still look at yourself in the mirror. If everything that you did, you can still look at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, I'm happy about what I did. And I'm, I'm happy that I did that. I love what I'm yes. doing. I, yeah. I deserve to be here. I did all this on my own. I did, you know, again, that's going to look different for each person, you know, but you've got to have your limits. You've got to have what you are willing to do and how far you yes. are willing to go. And as long as you stay in your box, what you have framed out, then you shouldn't be worried about what anybody else has to say. You shouldn't be worried about uh, imposter syndrome. You deserve to be where you are. Uh, that's the bottom yeah. line, you know, and, and we've talked about this before. Once you get up into the upper tiers of our sport, the upper echelons of, of our sport, sometimes it doesn't matter how hard you work or what you do. You're just not genetically gifted enough. That's just, Absolutely. just is what it is. That's with any yeah. sport. That's with any sport. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're never going to have, you know, a Serena and Venus Williams, like in every, like every level of tennis that they, they, they only exist once, you know what I mean? They're, they're special Correct. for a reason. Yeah. You know, so, and you can look yeah. at that on any walk, walk of life. You're going to have one Taylor Swift, you know what I mean? She just happens to be who she is, you know, like that, that just, it, yeah. it just, it just is what it is. But I bet you also, they didn't have a problem with the self-regulating thermostat either. Or they do, but they have their tools on right. how to kind of move past that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm really, really bad on myself when it comes to imposter syndrome. I've had to pull myself out of that multiple yeah. times. And I, just like you said, at the start of every season, usually around New Year's, uh, sorry, um, I do like a little goal setting. So I do personal goals, um, business goals, yep. tangible, actionable behaviors that I'm going to change to make those goals happen. And then my personal why statement and not just of like, I do this because like really deep dive. This takes me yeah. days to see like, sometimes it just starts with a word or a few words. And then I kind of develop my why based off that. And just like you said, do it in a non-emotional brain, not in the middle of prep in a, you know, I usually do it around the holidays. It's a happy season. I'm in a clear space. And every single time that I'm in the thick of prep or I'm in that imposter moment, I open up that notes tab and I reread my own thoughts and my dreams and my visions from a clear headspace. Yes. And I always think back to you wrote this when you were not altered mentally yes. from being on low food, from being in the middle of show prep, from, you know, watching other people on social here, stepping on stage with next week, you wrote this in a healthy brain. This is still yep. true. Believe yep. this. Um, so I think, I think that was a great point of like really deep diving that in a healthy mm -hmm. brain. And what that means is like a non-emotional yes. brain. <laughs> and this is, this goes for everything in life too. We do this for our business every year. We do this at the end of the year, every year um, in December, we usually we do a little retreat where we just lock ourselves in a room for four days. And that's what we do. We just go through everything that we did through the year. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? You know, what do we want to do for next year? What are our goals for next year? If we hit our goals, what did we do right? If we didn't hit our goals, what, what did we do that? Why didn't we hit our goals? You know, those kinds of things so that that way we're always moving forward. And it's the same exercises that we do every single year. So you can go back and you can look over year over year. Are we improving? And if we're right. not, where are we not improving? Where are yes. we lacking? And what can we do? to change that. Sometimes it's not about that you did anything wrong either, because, you know, like we were just talking about with the, the whole pandemic situation with QD's Cock on the stage, we had to adapt. We had to, there was just, you couldn't fit more than 20 people in a room. That was just how it was. If you didn't, you wouldn't. <laughs> right. So sometimes, right? You wouldn't yeah, sometimes it's event. just about sitting back and saying, okay, these are the things going on in our world today. So these are the things we have to do in order to change, to adapt towards it. You know, we were talking about that. So 
my husband's big into, into, you know, business obviously, but history and all that kind of stuff too. So, uh, the other day, yesterday when I was at the gym, he was just doing Google research about Caesars where we stayed in Atlantic city. And he's like, did you know that Caesars went bankrupt? And like, I think it was like 2003 or something like that. I was like, no, I didn't know that. He's like, and he starts, I don't remember all the numbers. I don't think he was throwing out numbers. Like, yeah. He's like, they brought in like 5 billion, but they were under by like two, 230 billion or something like that or whatever. So they had to claim bankruptcy and reorganize and all this kind of stuff. You know, wow. so like things like that, you know, I would go back to, you know, I said, listen, if we fail at something, we can always just figure something else out. Like, look at, look at Trump, like Trump went bankrupt however many times he did. And he still, he still made it <laughs> like, he's still good, you know? And, and no one remembers that until <laughs> right. Says exactly. It. You know, like yeah, it's did. like everybody fails, but the reason why they fail is because they shoot for something, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. If you're not failing, that's because you're not trying. You know? Absolutely. And sometimes you, you you learn a whole lot more through failing than you ever did by just succeeding all the time. Like, so, and yeah. sometimes you only see people's successes, you know, sometimes you only see people's successes, but behind the scenes, they're failing. And that's, and that's Absolutely. okay. That's what brings about the success. You know what I mean? And remember that on social media, remember at the end of the day, it's a highlight reel. Most people are posting that like over the last week, I haven't posted all on yeah. social media. What am I going to post? Oh, woe is me. I'm bloated. Blah, blah, blah. Like, no, of course Absolutely. not. I'm just silent. But when I'm feeling better, now I'm going to be back to posting my, yep. my photos and blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, social media is a highlight right. reel. So remember those, those people that you're envying or that you're like, why am I not there? They have their yep. stuff. No, like I just, I posted just, about this this past it. week. My, you know, my dad got cancer and was diagnosed with all that. And people, nobody, like, unless you were really close to me, you didn't know that that was what was, what was going on, you know, yeah. but we were dealing that with that, but, you know, thankfully he's cancer free and everything like that now. And we have to, Thank yeah, we goodness. have to, you know, obviously it's going to be a lifelong thing now he's got to pay attention to and everything, but it's, it, it was, it was rough, you know, rough. and just, just the mental toll that that takes on you. But and again, unless you knew me, you didn't know what was going on. I didn't, I didn't tell right. people that that was going on in the background. You know, there was, there's no need for anybody to know that, first of all. And then secondly, I'm like, I, when, it, when it all came down, like there's a bunch of other things that happened too, like another friend who had a, a spouse pass away from cancer and things like that. And I just saw, you know, I saw things that were happening on social media to her that were not very nice. And uh, so I was like, you know, I, I sometimes you just need to be re reminded that in the background, people are dealing with stuff. You know, people are dealing with yes. stuff and you don't know. You don't know. You know, right. you can sit there and say, okay, they're posting booty shots all the time. Okay, great. But you don't know why they're doing, why, why they're doing that. You don't know what, why they are there. doing what they You know, do. just, just be nice to people, you know, just, just yeah. think about for a second what could be going on. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people suffer in silence, yeah. you know, and I think that's, that's a really good point, mm -hmm. you know, and one, something that my, one of my sponsors posted today, Premier Alternative Medicine, it was literally a shot of a dartboard. Mm -hmm. And the dartboard has nothing on the bullseye. All the darts all, are all around yeah. it. And then there's a, next to it, just like a pile of darts. And it was like, this is success. Yeah. Even if you're shooting for it and you're not getting a bullseye, you're still trying. You're still trying to do that. Right. But if you don't even pick up the dart at yep. all, that's yep. failure. And that can be a form of self-sabotage, yep. being comfortable, the climate. Because if you just say to yourself, I'm not good enough. I can't, I won't. Well, you're, you're never going to even have a shot at whatever you That's want right. out of life. Anyway. That's right. I would rather take the shot yep. and miss and know, cool. I tried. Maybe I'm not genetically gifted. Maybe I'm never going to go mm -hmm. here. Whatever. Nope. That's okay. I That's tried. Right. At least I know that though. And I feel a lot better about that yep. mentally than the, the wonder of ever. Could I mm -hmm. have, should I have that to me would be a lot more absolutely just i think that all the time it's that it's like okay if i don't do this i'm gonna question myself yeah if i don't and i don't want to i'd rather just know that i suck at it <laughs> right <laughs> i'd rather just know i suck next move yeah. on because yeah. because you yeah. don't know what's going to come from that either you know like again i always liken this back to yeah okay i'm a pro athlete i get that but I, i've never been at the top level of our sport but i have a really good successful business in this in this field and I wouldn't have that had I not put myself out there. 
you know, like then this didn't, I mean, when I was a little girl, I didn't say I was going to be looking at boobs and butts for a living and like maybe right. <laughs> like, no, this didn't anything. happen. By that's not like what I dreamed to do when I was a child, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but look at where I am now. I'm like, look, ma, I made it. I'm like, sometimes I laugh. Look, ma, I made a business out of what I, I know. Did. Like literally sometimes I sit there, I'm like, how do I have a business? And I literally stare at girls' glutes all day long. And that's <laughs> I say the same thing. I'm like, how did I get so lucky? This is so weird. Though. <laughs> I know it's so, it's so hard to explain to other people. They're like, I don't, but I don't understand. Yeah, no, <laughs> people that aren't in the sport don't get it. Like, you know, they ask you about like how I feel about Drew with like female athletes. I'm like, we don't no. even look at the body anymore. This like a body to us is a yeah. physique. I'm looking at your shoulder, just like you said. When a girl comes out, I've posed her before. I'm not looking at her face. I'm looking at her physique. Yep. I'm looking at the symmetry, the balance, the fullness. Like that's what I'm yep. looking at when I look at check-in yep. photos. It's it's but people don't understand that unless they've been there. When you look at bodies all day long, that that's literally what it is at that point. It's that's a right. body. It's a physique. I try to tell people it's kind of like a gynecologist. It's just you see the same thing every 100%. single day. It's just it just is what it is, you know? Yeah, to them it's just it's yeah, it's just that's their job. That's another body part. They'd see it all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, so <laughs> yeah. No, but it's a good topic though, because I think a lot of people, especially new people, you know, your first year of competing, it's such rough yeah. waters because you know you have so much to catch up on, you know, being new mm -hmm. to something. And it's like, oh my gosh, like this seems so daunting. A year, a year to yeah. grow. Like, am I ever going to make it to stage? And the year goes by it like does. that. And then before you know it, you're so much closer than you thought. So just put your head down, keep grinding. Literally, when you get when you get questioning with yourself, just ask yourself that very simple statement. Why not right. you? Why not right. you? Why, why can you not do that? Why can you not be successful with that? I would also w work on writing down your mm -hmm. why and personal goals in a notes tab and let that be maybe a development. And the more that you think and the more you grow, keep adding to yep. it, keep changing it. My why has changed Yep. 10 times since I started doing a why. I mean, it changes all the time because I'm constantly right. changing and I'm making that check in with myself, but it's very normal to have imposter syndrome. It's very normal to, as a human, be comfortable, yep. but success requires getting uncomfortable and constantly getting uncomfortable. So as soon as you feel like you feel that climate change and you're just sitting there hanging out in your 66 degrees like yep. me, make sure you make that change. Get uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's, and that's a perfect way to, to wrap that that whole topic up. I mean, you gotta get comfortable being with being uncomfortable. It is what it is. Let that That's heat it. get a little hotter. Let that heat get a little hotter. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And when you're done being uncomfortable and you feel satisfied, then maybe you know it's time yeah. to end whatever you're doing and move your, move on to the next And there's thing. nothing wrong with that either, too. Absolutely yeah, not. There's, there's, just like yeah. you, when you're done, you're going to continue making That's suits. Right. When I'm done, I'm going to continue coaching. That's right. I'm still going to be involved. I'm still involved in the thing I love. I'm just going to be done doing yep. it myself. And there's other ways to be involved in the sport too. Like look at all of the, all, all of our judges were athletes at one point or another. You know, yep. everybody that's involved yep. in the sport used to be on the stage in one point or another. Yes. They're on the stage. Now they're behind the scenes. There are plenty of ways to stay active. You can do it just as a little side gig. So you can stay active in the, on the weekends and things like that and go to shows or, you know, help expedite backstage or whatever it is. If you still love the sport, you just don't want to actually get on stage anymore. There's plenty of ways to stay active. Plenty of ways. Plenty. Yeah, plenty of ways. They're always looking. I tell girls all the time, they're always looking for help at shows, always looking for volunteers, you know, all those kinds of things. So if you ever want to be involved in it, you can. Um, even yes. even not being on stage ever, you can still be involved if you want to be. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, the trophy yeah. girls, the expediters mm -hmm. backstage, those people are so valuable. And you like you don't even think like, oh, where do, where do they hire them? Where do they find them? Well, probably these people called the promoters and said, hey, That's I right. want to be involved, you know, and I, I would just want to be there that yeah. day. Can I be a trophy girl? Like, put yourself right. out there. you know, And then you never know what that opportunity is going to bring yep. as well. Yep. The only thing that, uh, that can't bring you those opportunities is just sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> Laying the dark yeah. down. Yeah, not trying. Them. Not trying. Just try. Who yeah. cares? What's the worst thing that people could say? No. Absolutely. How many times do we hear no a day? A lot of times. A lot of times. A lot. Might as well just get the, yeah. they call it the law of averages in sales. So for every nine no's, you'll get one yes. So you might as well get those no's out of the way. You might as well yep. get those no's out of the way. Start now. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you're one step closer right. to the yes. Absolutely. So anyway, on that note, let's do a couple of questions. I've got a bunch okay. still that are left over Perfect. from 
um, from last week that we didn't even get to. So, um, so I thought this was actually a good one uh, that we kind of both describe. So can you guys describe how you set up your camera and your lights, your height, your location of the light, et cetera? This is for progress photos. So how do you set up your, your whole setup for progress photos? Uh, for when you say progress photos, you uh -huh. mean check-in photos, uh -huh. correct? Okay. Um, so just to pre pre profess, preface this, I do have a reel on my Instagram. It is very, very cool called How to Take Check-in Photos. So if you want to take a look at that, I literally, it's from top to bottom. It shows you my light setup, et cetera. Do you have that in your story um, highlights? I don't have it in my story highlights. Okay. I just have okay. it on reels, but maybe I should put it in my FAQ one. I'll put it in my FAQ one. So you could also probably pin the reel too. That's yeah. a good idea yeah. too. Anyway. That's <laughs> a good idea too. Because I, I sent this one to people yeah. all the time because I get some really bad check-in photos and I'm very particular with, with my athletes and like how I want things set up. So I have a black backdrop. I've been using that since the start of this prep. I really like it because my house has so many colors and I have to get my house redone by like gray and then like brown floors. So like, uh -huh. it just, I like just like that clean backdrop. Um, I have a light. Um, I have a glam core light. It's a little bit on the expensive side. It's about 150 bucks on Amazon, but I like it cause it's wide. Uh -huh. So it's not just like, so like right in the center, it kind of wraps around and I don't know, it just gives me some more light. My house is very okay. dark. It's like a back cave in here. Um, and then I use a tripod. Um, I, I'm still shocked at how many people do not have a tripod. I put the tripod at knee height and I kind of look, have it slightly yes. pointed up like the judge's angle. I have in the past done the base of a chair with like a water bottle on the base of a chair and then just like prop my phone up yes. like this. So if you do not have a tripod, that's the best way to do it. Use your front camera, back camera, put your video on, and I just hold mm -hmm. my poses. And then I'll screenshot from Okay, video. cool. I do my so with mine, I like the idea of the, of the black backdrop. That's one thing I don't do. Um, it's just because the way that I have my uh, have it set up in my studio, I have a long space where I can do my walk. So whenever, um, whenever I walk or whenever I check in, I do video and I do my walk and all that kind of stuff. So um, Anyway, so I set up in the same spot every time. Um, I set, I have a ring light, so I have my ring light set up and I have it on the warm setting on the ring light. That's the other thing too. I think some people, I always make sure that my light is exactly the same. So like my ring light has different um, brightnesses and different um, temperatures. So I have it on the lowest brightness. So I have it on the warm setting. Um, I just feel like the brighter it gets, the more it blows me out. I can't see anything. So anyway. What about the... Uh, rest of the lights off. in the room. Do you have? Yes. Me too. All lights are off. Just, just yes. the light. All lights are off. I black out curtains up. So there's no natural light coming in either. Um, I love natural light for photos, but it's so inconsistent. You can't get the same, you can't get the same setting every time. So I don't do natural light because of that. Um, I use the same ring light every time. Uh, so I get the light exactly the same every time I have it set. I even set up my, uh, my light the same as far as height is concerned. Like I put it all the way down the lowest setting for the, for the height of the box or the, of the, of the ring light. Yes. So that way I know it's the same spot every time. Um, every time. And then, you know, the center of the, the ring light is where your phone goes and everything like that. But I find that that is hard for me to get my phone to really set right. So I actually have a separate tri tripod that I put in front of my light that I can set it exactly the same every single time. The same thing I do uh, that you do. My my height of my um, tripod is, be I always tell people go between your knee and your hip height. Um, as far as the height, some girls will try to put it down at the floor. Some girls do it up above and down. No, do do somewhere that's between your knee to your hip. Okay. So for me, it hits just above my knee is where that's at. And yes, it's just slightly tilted up. So one of the ways that I check to see um, my angle and all that kind of stuff too is by various things that are in my actual studio. Like I know that if I can see my heat press on the one side of my camera, then I know it's in the right spot. If I can't see that heat press, then I've twisted it or something like that. Same thing with the ceiling. If I can see the one beam on my ceiling, then I know it's in the right spot. If I can't see that beam, it's not in the right spot. Um, I stand on the, I have slats on my floor. I stand on the same slats every time. So I'm standing in the same spot every time. Um, all those things. Um, if you have an iPhone, um, I, and I, I watch, you know, you can attach your phone to your watch. For the remote. So that's why, that's how I take yeah. my photos. Um, okay. So 
that way I make sure I'm set up. Now, if you look at your, you might be able to actually be able to see this if I pull it up here. I was going to say, make sure you show them because I know a lot of people do not know about that. So it's right feature. here it's pretty cool. and I've got my camera right here. So you see it's, it's right there. So I stand, if you, if you notice, right, let me see, I'm trying to get it in my thing while I've got it on me. So if you notice, this is the timer right here, this little three right here, that's a three second timer. So I make sure my feet in this picture are right um, splitting this, this three. On yeah. The so that makes sure that I make, I'm in this, in the center of my camera every time. So all of those things, like I, I can just look right here and I can see, I'm, you know, that's me. Okay, cool. So I can put the, I can put my feet right there. Right. So that way I know yep. that I'm in the, in the same spot every time. Um, and then I just snap three, three shots, um, for each pose. And then I just check and make sure they're good. And then I go back and I do the same thing for my videos. Um, I do two videos. I do one where it's my routine and then I do one where it's my walk to the back. So okay. um, I don't, cause I don't do the walk to the back in my routine. So I used to, and then that scenario, I just did one video because it was in my routine, but now right. it's not anymore. So I do two videos. So I'll stop and I'll, I'll, I'll hit the back pose, step out of it, walk to the back, hit the back pose, turn around, walk forward, hit my front pose and off just like I would do it on stage. So those are my, those right. are my two, uh, my check-ins. That's how I do it. Every but week. notice how consistent we yes. are with everything. And that's where people got to define what works for them, their house, their colors, their setup. But like you're saying, like the same yes. slats, the same look, the same height. Yes. Like I have little uh, tape on all of my tripods and things like that. So everything is the same yep. every time. Consistency, just like anything yep. else. And the same thing with the suits. Like, you know, I try to stick to relatively similar suits and suit cuts every time too. Like you'll notice whenever I post my photos, I'll talk about, okay, I changed the cut here. I changed because of, because of things I see in my progress photos, you know? Um, sure. But that can significantly change how you look if you're wearing different different bikinis every time. You know what I mean? Like your right. glutes are going to look better in one than the other. You, things like that. You, you know, you're going to see more of your hip line. You're going to see more of this. You're going to see more of that. So try to keep your suits the same. That's why I say have a posing suit, not your stage suit all the time. Like I, I, I think it's cool that people want to wear their stage suit all the time, but it wears it out when you wear it every single week. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, yeah. and also little things like I put fake tanner on every night before I go and do my check-ins. So I put my fake That's tanner fine. on Decent yeah. Blinds. So, other, I'm so, I mean, you can see it here. I'm so pale. I'm see-through, you know, like, so I put yeah. some fake tanner on on Wednesday nights. And when I get up in the morning, I rinse it off and then I go take my photos and stuff. So I do the same thing every time. Every time. So then that way they look the same. Cause so I go back and I look at, you know, I've been checking in with Jamie now three years. Right. So I go back and I look at my, my pictures from three years ago and I wasn't doing all this, all of this stuff back then. And I'm like, man, some of these you can't even see anything. Like, I don't know. I don't even know what I was doing. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, you can't tell that yep. I changed anything because everything has changed. You know what I mean? So right. yeah, well, technology has increased yeah. and gotten better, but it's now going to be cool. The more consistent yeah. you are now in another two years, you're going to be like, damn, those photos That's look right. good. And they're the same, hopefully. Yep. Well, even that, you know, like I moved into my, my new house last year. So now I look at the different background for, in comparison to where I was before that. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's sure. all different. It's all different. But like now... Again, I, I be as consistent as possible. And a lot of that is figuring out what that means too. Like like the whole tanning thing. Like for a while I didn't do that, but I realized that that's why I was looking so blown out in all my photos. And like Jamie would see me in person and be like, oh, you have a lot more lines than I thought and stuff like that, you know? So there, those are also things that you learn over time, you know? Yeah, over time. So that's, that's how yeah. I do mine. So, but I think like, like, like you said, like consistency is what's most important for sure. hundred percent. Definitely. So like with anything in life. Right. I know. Let's find one more question to do. Let's see. So we got that one. Do a quick, do a quick one. Cause my dog is not. Okay. Ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So let's do this one second, buddy. Real quick is, um, what's your opinion on waist trainers? Ooh, that's a tough one actually. <laughs> um, depends okay. obviously per client. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't do a lot of waist trainers, um, especially for, you know, people say, well, what about the women that have a blown out waist? I've been doing a lot this year with my master's clients or clients that, that need core control, a lot of pelvic floor yeah. therapy. 
um, strengthening of the pelvic floor. Um, I have a great therapist that actually works here in Florida at my aunt's clinic, but she does online coaching physical therapy. Um, so she's working with a lot of my master's clients on pelvic floor dysfunction and weakness. So yes, Kegel therapy, you know, things like that, but it's so much more than that is a true exercise program and then vacuum Mm -hmm. work. Um, but I like the waist trainers to be utilized in like, um, uh, like, like a weightlifting belt scenario. So some people don't like a belt. They just like that feeling of a waist trainer instead. So if I want them to wear that to take pressure off the abdominals, so we're not building up the abdominals too much or getting a blocky waist, I'm totally fine with that. But honestly, like I don't use them all that much or prescribe them all that much. I don't use them myself at all. But I think that it's it definitely is a time and a place thing. I think if it works for you, great. If it helps you think about bringing your core in, or if it helps you stay tighter, yes. great. I, no, no problem. No harm. No. I doubt. agree on all of those things that you just said. Um, I do think it's a it's a person by person basis. Um, and I also say what they can help with is like you just said, not building up. Um, obliques and things like that, but it can also help to atrophy too. So if you have built up muscle, it can help to atrophy your, your waist as well. Um, which can be helpful for a lot of people that I, I, I use them myself for that. Um, but it can also go too far too, to the point where you have no lines and things like that as well. So like you said, the pelvic floor, the vacuums, all that stuff is very important too. So I think there's a balancing act with it. And I think that it works for some people. Like you just said, all of the things that you just said, I a hundred percent agree with. I used them um, last year um, to try to actually tighten skin up for me too. Like it can help to like with with Adam's tissue and things like that, it can help to tighten and get rid of that last little bit of that, you know, that watery kind of fat over top of you kind of thing. Um, yeah. So that sort of thing I did, I did use it for as well, but I also started getting some digestive issues too. So, uh, so I stopped using it because of that reason. So I think I've heard that yeah. too. So I think there's a plus and a minus, just like anything else. There's going to be a, uh, if there's a positive Absolutely. aspect to it, there's going to be a negative aspect to it as well. So you have to determine which one is the one that you want to, um, that you want to use, utilize, you know? I don't think it's like the end no. all be all for a tight no, core. I don't either. Like, I think abs are made Agreed. in the kitchen. I think good digestion makes a tight waist mm-hmm. and you're strengthening of your transverse yes. abdominus like that is what a tight a tight waist is not just wearing a waist trainer all day every day thinking that that's what's causing yep. that or it's gonna make your waist like truly like that smaller like there's so many other things that have to be yes. on for you to have tight and the waist. bottom line is is it's not going to change your anatomy you know like right you are just built a little bit bigger through the waistline and that's not muscle it's just your structure it's not going to make it any smaller Right. If you're already lean and that's just where you are, that's just where you are. You can't change bones. Yep. <laughs> unless, unless. You know, right. Exactly. Right. Which is definitely possible. Which I have known a couple. I'm like, wow, yeah. that's mm-hmm. crazy. Yep. But that's so that was a good one. I, and I agree with you. Like, I don't think that there's something to be demonized, but I also don't think there's something that you have no. to wear either. You know? Yeah. Time and a place. If it worked for you, great. But I try to do other things mm-hmm. first. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. So that was, those were some good questions. Okay. So that'll wrap us up for, for today. Since you can go take your, take care of your puppy. I got to go eat and go train and all that. Uh, Trust me. I get it. (laughs) So when he's got to go, I guess. Gotta go go potty. It is what it is. (laughs) Like at least they're very vocal about it. That's a good thing. They are. (laughs) He's like, I'm like, dude, it's okay. You've never, never. (laughs) So with that, you guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, ask your questions. Because as you can can see, we do answer questions every time for you too. And they also help us with topic suggestions and things like that as well. So uh, appreciate all of you, all of you, all of y'all, all of (laughs) y'all. All of y'all. We're out with behind the bikini. We'll be back again next week. Thank you guys so much.